what is going on youtube in today's video we're doing something that we probably should have done a long time ago so we're going to be overhauling the entire audio system in the c5 now the radio was already replaced with a clarion radio so as you can see in here this thing right here it's a flip out radio it is already a very good radio uh it came with the car when i bought it and it came with GPS and uh, Sirius or satellite radio. So don't have to worry about touching that, which I won't. Back here we have everything we need. So let's start with the speakers. This is the factory Bose speaker and that is coming out for these. And these are gonna be Kicker CS65, six and a half inch speakers. So uh, these are 300 watts, 100 watts RMS, um, and I'm, I have four of these, so I'm also converting the front to six and a half as well. So I'll show y'all the adapter kit later, but the SCAR audio amp right here is a 900 watt five channel amp, and it is a SK900D5, or 5D, I'm sorry. It's a SKM900 5D, and this is a compact amp. 900 watts, uh, 100 per channel, and 500 for the sub. And speaking of subs, we are going with the Scar Audio. Uh, I forgot the name of the sub at this point because it has been almost a year since I bought this sub. But this is a 10 inch sub. So with that being said, uh, I gotta modify the box for the sub to fit. So that'll be a project within itself that I'll get to later. As you can see, the rest of this stuff is just wire. So, you know, some RCA cables, just because you're gonna need an extra set, if you're running, especially if you're running a sub. Um, if you buy an amp kit, just keep that in mind. Um, this one came with the amp kit that I bought, but you need a set for the front, the rear, and then you're gonna also need a set for the sub if you're running a sub. So, with all that being said, I'm rewiring everything since we are going to be completely overhauling it. So that is everything. Other things you might need um, are gonna be a pry tool set like I have right here. Um, and just miscellaneous things like a screwdriver because you're gonna have to use that to get those. Uh, you're gonna have to use a screwdriver to get some things moved around. So that's that. Uh, so now let me show you what I've done already before I get back to work. So. I went ahead and took the battery out. That's what you should do too also. Take the battery out and I have it sitting over there. And then if you can see down here, I've run a wire through the rubber grommet. Down there, way down there, you can see where the wire's running through a rubber grommet. It normally sticks out. I just used a screwdriver and poked a hole in the tape, forced it through, and for that, the next thing I did was there were, there are two plastic screws to drop this little thing right here down with my middle fingers on. And once you get those out, you can see where the wire is coming from. Pull it through in a way that you can close it back up. And then I just pulled up this plastic trim piece and ran the wire through to where the amp will be mounted, which is right back here. And this carpet does pull up. You don't even have to undo anything. So you can run the wire literally through the back of the carpet. So that makes life easy. Um, and then as far as back here, uh, you just need a little pry tool maybe to get the covers off these covers like this off of your grill. And then on top of that, once you do that, uh, it'll be four screws in there. And the easy way to get these screws out is to use something like this and it's not screws there's um actually like sockets or bolts and you can use a socket wrench to get them off it's a seven millimeter socket wrench to get those little screws out over here so so for that last one you're going to want to get under there pry on the metal with one hand and then take your socket or whatever you're using and get that out or it'd probably be better to use like an open-ended wrench. That's the only way I could get mine out on the top. 
and that way it's easy to get the speaker out of that enclosure so if you have a coupe you do not have to remove none of this plastic i did on that side and i regret it uh, so i'm going to be putting all that back because i don't even have to remove anything probably not even to run the wire so very simple if you have a coupe um, so now let's get back to work i know that was a lot of talking a lot of explaining but this is my first time doing this on a two-door car all right guys so um i'm back so let me go ahead and give you the first update of what all i've done i've made a good amount of progress so as you can see i've got speaker wire running through both sides uh, from the enclosure of the rear speakers all the way back to where the amp is gonna sit inside. So I'll show you. So this is where it stops. And as you can see, I just ran this piece of wire under. And all you need to do to make it easy is get to, get to a pry tool set, something like this. And what I did was I just pried up and I forced the wire through this way. And once I did that, I was able to pull it through the enclosure and then I can just run the wire down as you can see all the way until it connects. So it'll be easy way to hide the wires and on the other side, same thing, same process. And I did the same thing for the other side. Uh, it's just a little bit more wire you have to run and I'll show y'all again. So if you look way down there, there's a flap that you can literally just catch a grip of and you can lift up if you can see. So take that, lift it up, run the wire under. You're gonna wanna take your dash off. I'll get to that in a second, but you can literally run the wire to where it is barely noticeable. Oh man, for me, I am not a neat freak with that seat back with how I drive that wire will never be seen like that. So, um, that's all you have to do to run the wires to the back speakers. Uh, I had the wire size that came with the kit was 17 feet. That's really all you need for the back. So, um, for the front, you're gonna need more because running wire to the door speakers would just be more of a process. So, now let's talk about how you get your dash out and what you're gonna need to run from your radio. So there's gonna be a total of two bolts under this piece right here, under this traction module. And I know mine is up, but you'll, you'll see bolts going, like two studs going through this. And it'll be some bolts inside of this. Terrible, terrible explanation chance, I know, but you have two seven millimeters you'll get off of this and then inside of here right next to your glove compartment there's going to be two more bolts you need to get out and one right here is going to be a star bit and i the other one is going to be next to um cigarette lighter so you got two right there and it's just under this piece that you flip back so those hide from you the last bolt is going to be next to your ignition. There's going to be a plastic piece that looks, that, that hides your climate control. Just use a little pry bar or screwdriver, pop that off, and that's gonna be the last bolt that holds your dash in. So once you get all four of those out, or all five of those out, I should say, you'll be able to pop the dash out, which is where I am now. Now, what's giving me issues right now is I gotta get this radio out and Whoever installed it left the wire so tight that I cannot even pull the radio out enough to access the wires. All right, so we're back again. And in this update, we've ran all of our RCA cables. So for those, the best way to run them is going to be, you're gonna to wanna to drop this panel. This panel, there's gonna be two screw holes, one on each side, and they're gonna be a star bit. And excuse me, I said star bit. This is actually a T10 Torx bit. So for all your screws and the dash, it's gonna be a T10 Torx bit. So there's gonna be two on the bottom. Drop those out first, and then just pull from the top area 
and you can see how the clip is you're gonna want to kind of pull out of outward you know straight out if you can up top just pull out a out and up motion and that should pop both of these out there's going to be some connected back there you don't have to disconnect it but that's going to drop it and what i did is i ran the wire you know you're going to have to pull this trim piece off too but i ran the wire underneath the carpet around that wire and then as you can see the the metal post you just run them over it and then that's going to give you access to the back of the radio up there so just run them like that um and when you get back here take your pry tool pry this little trim piece up and then you're going to want to slide it let's see if i can get you guys some light So you're going to want to slide it by between the carpet right here. You see how I'm moving this carpet and you're going to want to pull this piece back as well. And you're going to want to squeeze the wire in there. And then you're going to, there's a little lip on here. Once you get it all the way to the bottom, pull that out, slide the wire through. And as I showed you earlier, you can pull this carpet up and that's how I have my wires run underneath this carpet. So. It's very hidden, and then once you go through, you can see I'm gonna run my wire all the way through. You can run it underneath this little console, and then come back around to where the amp will be sitting. And it's a wiring mess, but all your wires will be ran neatly behind the seat. So the neat part, I'm still working on, but that's how you can run all the wires there so now all we have left to do is run the speaker wire from the front two speakers where the amp is and one key to make sure to do is your power wire you want to make sure to only run the power wire on its own side and then as far as the ground goes uh, you can use your back seat bolt as a ground on the passenger side your RCA cables and all of your signal wire, everything to do with that, you wanna run on the opposite side of the vehicle. You do not wanna run your power wire and your RCA cable or any of your other wires on the same side just to prevent that static noise in your speakers. Because if you do, it'll be alternator noise, static in your speakers. I dealt with that on one of my builds. That's just not something that's fun to deal with. So. Make sure you run them down separate sides. I know I'm all over the place with this, but that's gonna save you some time. And for the front speakers, you'll need to take the door panels off, which I'll probably go more in depth about that because it's not hard, but you need to take the door, speaker, the door panels off, so. All right, guys, next update. Not sure what day this is, honestly. I lost track, I've been up here so many days. So, we have the first speaker in and let me show you how we did this so obviously we took the door panel off and I'm not gonna really explain that even though I have to do the other side because this video is already getting long so if you want to know how to take the uh, door panel off watch a few videos and you'll be able to get it off but once you get to this point you just need to get the bowl speaker out and there should be six screws. So as you can see on the outer edges, you have six and they're all seven millimeters, just like most of the other speaker related stuff on this car. And once you get those out, this whole assembly comes off. So then you can put your Metro or I'm pretty sure Metro is the only company that makes an adapter. So once you do that, um, then only thing that's really left is running your wire through this rubber piece right here and once you pull the speaker back which i don't even have to do that you obviously you're going to be able to see or feel a hole right here this is where all your wires run and then you'll be able to run it through over here so let me show you how i ran the wire if i can this is not going to be easy guys i'm not sure if you can see this very well but i'm going to attempt to do my best to show you so way up here, you can see that there's wire running. This is my speaker wire, the red and blue wire. 
and what you need to do is pop this panel off and to do that I was struggling to get it until I pulled this black wire my thumb is on just pull that and it'll literally pop the panel out for you and that is how you run your speaker wire from the passenger side into the cabin itself so now you can see that I have the wire ran through here and this is all gonna sit above this piece once I put it back up but then you want to run it through this little hole right here and you might be wondering where this goes it's going to lead down off in there and all you need to do is push and push it to your left a little bit and push it through until you can see so you can physically see the wire right down there pull it through and then you can run your wire like I have all the way to the back where your amp is going to sit so for your passenger side that is how you need to run the wire um, you can run it to the other side and all the way back around but I found this most effective I found this most effective to go ahead and just run the wire down the tunnel it's that's the route I found easy use a lot more wire if you run down the passenger side and come back it's just a lot more routing to do um, another way is just to run it under the carpet if you take your seat out it'd probably be a lot easier to do all of this if you take your seats out but um, the reason I'm not running it next to the power wire is because you're not supposed to do that uh, because it gives you it'll probably there's a chance it'll give you sound coming through your speakers from the power wire you're not supposed to run anything near the power wire so that's why we're having to run the wire like this. After you do this, the driver's side will be a piece of cake because you can run the speaker wire exactly the same way you ran your RCA cables once you get it through that little door that I showed you. Same thing on the other side, a lot easier to run though. So the next thing we'll be doing is doing the driver's side and, and then I'll show you how I ran the wires on that side. Here is the other side and I have not mounted the speaker in because I wanted to show y'all what I did. So my kicker speakers came with this wire that literally just connects in. And I just took some caps and twisted them. Twisted the caps on. Simple as that. You will need to either do you have to do something something as far as the uh clearancing so that the window does not hit so what you can probably do is either tape them, you know, clean the area off inside, tape them against the inside of the door panel tape the wire itself or uh zip tie it inside so that the window has clearance to let up and down or let down and not move the wire not sure that would be a big deal but something to worry about so on this side uh, again uh, like i showed you you take your uh take that inside panel off and it's just right there so you just run the speaker wire all the way around the same way you run your RCA cables as you can see I still got to clean that up a little bit but it runs all the way to the other side so with that being said that is pretty much it for a lot of that I'm wiring the back speakers as we speak uh, and then we'll get to wiring the amp all right guys so we got a few updates here um i have been working a lot to get this finished so let's get started with the first one um let's start with the sub so i bought this ring that goes around the sub uh thinking that the clearance from the bottom end of the sub was not enough but turns out that it was the side clearance the basket clearance that was the problem the sub was too wide for the box so my brother use his router um, to widen out the ring for me and now it fits in so I just need to screw it down and it looks pretty good and this will also give it a little bit more airspace which will make it sound a little bit better hopefully as far as the radio goes guys for this this car is just a cluster of wires and just madness um, this is a clarion radio and I looked it up this is a $400 radio I will not be replacing that but uh, with that being said, it is a cluster of wires. Um, I do have a, it's like a signal converter or a uh, amplifier box to convert the radio to be able to work with the factory speakers from access. Um, let's see if I can show you. 
Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get that out. It's just too many wires. And these popped out of place. But yeah, you can see that it's a lot of wires. Um, but I did get RCA's wired up, which are the blue and all the other RCA cables. And that's the other thing you'll need to do. Um, and yeah, so this is a cluster right now. Um, one thing I will suggest is you remove your uh, climate control. It gives you a lot more room to route the wires and everything through. So that's a quick update. Uh, so all I have left to do is connect my signal wire. And for the signal wire, that will ensure that your amp turns on. Now that's just the wire that runs the signal to the amp that when everything else gets power, the amp does also. And with your signal wire, you can run it down the same way that you run your power wire. I still gotta clean this up, of course, but that's that. All right, guys, so this is the final update. Everything is done. So let's take a look at what we have here. So as you can see, I got the red LEDs in. Um, I did throw those in. That was not part of the video, but a lot of my LEDs were not working, so I changed them out with the red ones, and I love it. So here's the sub, uh, and this is how the box fits. No, it doesn't match, but I kind of don't care about that. It fits amazing, and you can't see where the wire is coming from. It's completely tucked and clean, so that's that. Uh, as you can see, I got all the covers back on. As you can see, I got it sitting tucked off back there. It is a wiry mess once you let the seat up, but I got most of it tucked under the carpet. You can't really see it. You just see a few wires hanging down. I can clean those up, I guess, but I mean, that's the amp and it's mounted pretty much how I want it. So that's that. Everything's good to go with that. And also, radio everything is hooked back up this is 99 percent complete that being said i'm going to go ahead and jump in the car and hopefully i have the keys to throw it in the ignition so i can let you guys hear how good this dang system sounds because honestly this is a lot louder than the system i put in the tahoe not the sub but the door speakers the quality is better from this clarion radio it just sounds great you know this is by far the best sounding system I've had in any of my vehicles. I said that for the Tahoe, but this one for this car is on a whole nother level. It just sounds amazing. So let me go ahead and get the keys, get the keys in the ignition. And I'll let you guys hear something real quick. All right, guys, so got the radio on and it's gonna play some copyright free music. Hopefully it conveys the sound well enough. I'm gonna close this door so y'all hear it. Good. Let the windows up. system is it's amazing and you can hear even when I turn the volume up the clarity stayed the exact same the sub I bought um, 
it blows my mind. It's, I think it's four or five hundred watts RMS, but that thing absolutely slams in that box. It is perfect for the Corvette with the hatch. And um, honestly, even if I have the car running and I had the music on, you can't even hear the car running. You can turn this radio up loud enough to where you won't hear the car. So I've already tested it. If you have a full exhaust and you want to run this setup, it works just fine. You can easily do this. Just get you a good radio. And I think the key for the radios um, is make sure they have a uh, make sure they have four volt pre outputs. So that's going to be one. And then second, go ahead and get you a a good amp that also has four volt pre outputs. I think. Um, and then the speakers you run. Um, the ones I bought are Kicker uh, CS65s. They're 100 watts RMS each, so they get extremely loud. You don't have to run speakers that loud, but I recommend at least 60 to 80 watts RMS with a good radio and a good amp. Go ahead and spend your money on the radio and amp because it is going to pay dividends if you have a loud car like I do. So. With all that being said, I know this is a long video and kind of all over the place, but hopefully you guys got the point and you got what you were looking for out of this video. Um, that's going to do it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, comment, and let me know if you guys are running systems in your vet. Also, let me know what y'all think about these red lights. I really, really like these. Nice touch. They're like 10 bucks, 12 bucks. Oh man. You can literally have them all throughout the car. I do have the map sensor lights, but they just, I, I don't even want to deal with that. That's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, so that's gonna do it again. Um, like I said, if you're new, you know what to do. But as always, y'all take it easy and I will catch y'all on the next video.